2023 Cannes Yachting Festival and we are on a really amazing yacht that I'm so pleased that I've come to see. It's the Becker 45 Hardtop. It's a new brand, a new yacht and I'm here with John Johnson, the Yacht Boy, because I thought it'd be kind of cool to meet up with somebody else with a YouTube channel. Well, look, I, I really appreciate the invite and what a fantastic boat to do our first little collab on. So thanks for having me, I'm really excited. I, I think so. How's the channel going? Is it doing well? Yeah, yeah really well. The last uh, you know, last few months, getting up to 900,000 views a month, fantastic. edging ever closer towards that 50,000 subscriber mark. Uh, so yeah, I, I just love it. And obviously meeting people like you and your amazing team uh, is a perk of doing the YouTube stuff. So yeah, well, no, I'll put a uh, link to his channel in the description of this video and hopefully that'll put you up to the 50,000 no, and beyond. It. Thank you very much, no, I appreciate it. Now I've known you for two minutes and already I've realised that you're a very technically minded individual because you've been <laughs> saying things that I didn't know what you were saying so yeah. I thought that's impressive and I thought it'd be good to start with the engine room because for a 45 foot yacht that is quite a cool engine room. Yeah I mean the, the, the power plant on this boat is really outstanding. I mean you've got twin 600 IPS is in here now, but the fact you can get twin 800s in here into this space is just phenomenal. But the thing that really stuck out to me is considering this boat is 45 feet LOA, you've got a gyro stabilizer in there, which, which is incredible, really incredible. Uh, and I mean, it interests me that this demonstrates that you don't have to have a gyro stabilizer on the center line. I didn't know either. I always thought that the stabilization when it comes to the gyro had to be amidships. I didn't know it could be off-center, so yeah. yeah, you learn something new every day. In fact, the, um, the original gyros were for, used for the Japanese fishermen, oh, right, and okay. they just stick them anywhere on the deck of their boats, and they oh, work. So it's the way it works. Oh, it's really? Cool. I never knew that. Yeah, that's... it's um, fascinating. But that's the first time I've seen one off-center, but it works. Yeah. It works perfectly well. But you can get in there as well. I think, you know, for doing your general maintenance tasks that you've got to do, it's easy to get in there. You, you're not going to be kind of stepping on the machinery you can move around it yeah. which again you know it's, it's a really beamy boat but only 45 feet LOA. Yeah. Uh, before this opened up I had a, an image in my mind of what the engine room would look like and it surpasses what I thought yeah. just because of the sheer size yeah. of the space and the volume in there. Now the, the yacht is made of aluminium whereas you'd imagine it would be composite but it's, or for American viewers aluminum <laughs> and the shipyard have been saying it's really like a mini super yacht and as we look around you'll see that they're right but starting with have you seen what's behind you there oh okay yeah we've got the shower how often do you see that on a 45 foot boat yeah never and especially on a on a on a swim deck that is this big i mean yeah. you know you can really kind of move around here with your guests on board which on a swim deck this size for a boat of this size you'd yeah. you'd imagine you'd be stepping on each other but you, you, you're not but yeah, I mean, the fact you've got this, this shower here uh, and the flagpole as well, you, you really, as soon as you get onto the boat, you get this kind of soupy off feel, yeah. which is, yeah, really, really impressive, really impressive. Well, the owner of the shipyard, his company supplies a lot of the big names, Heeson, Fedship, because it's built in the Netherlands. And you can, I mean, that, that wouldn't look out of place on a Fedship, would it? No, it wouldn't. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So the shower comes apart in two pieces and fits underneath here which quite obviously is the, the sun pad. Yeah, a sizable sun pad with yeah. phone holders as well. Oh, I didn't notice the phone holders. Yeah, there's actually there's four. You've got two here, two on the port side, two over on the starboard side. Yeah, what, right. What phone have you got? Which one's that? It's the iPhone, I think it's the 13. Let's test it on the 14. So when you're underway... That, Yours is like the 14 Max. It is, yeah, it is yeah, yeah, it's the, the biggest yeah. one, yeah. But when you're underway, powering along at you know, 30 plus knots, that's not going anywhere. Yeah. I, I, uh, I was filming a, a yacht the other day uh, and I said, look, there's space there for your bottle of Bex. And I got so many abusive <laughs> comments about Bex. Why, are you, why <laughs> yeah. would you have a bottle of Bex yeah. on a super yacht? You that's a fair point. Dom Perignon. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair I'll probably be a Guinness to be fair, so I wouldn't be much better. I'll be do, you, much... do you get abusive comments yet? Is the channel at that point, are you that successful? Do you, do you know what, I, I do. And the way I try and think of it is constructive criticism, you know. If people want to, you know, use expletives and tell me how rubbish I am, I don't mind because I'll look at what they've said and think, okay, they've got a point in there. Yeah. Maybe the way they've made the point isn't particularly friendly, but it's social yeah. media. But I'll try and learn from every comment. You're right. Sometimes they've got a good point. Other yeah. times, other times not. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. And obviously I'm, I'm ex-Navy, ex so I'm used to the banter. Well, that's right. You're ex-Navy, aren't you? Yeah. People can offend me in the comments. It doesn't really work. <laughs> I'm used to it, but yeah. Let's have a look at the bow. Do you want yeah, to go absolutely. that way? I'll go this way. Yeah, I'll go this way. We'll meet at the, front. the pointy end. Yeah. 
More sun pads. More sun pads. Uh, you can have like carbon fiber poles so that you can have a sun awning over this. That's an optional yeah. that they do. But I thought from here, you can really appreciate the quality of the paint job they've done. It's uh, Yeah, the, fin the finish on here is outstanding. You can tell you're on a Dutch built boat yeah. because the finish is just so impeccable. Yeah. In fact, uh, I'll ask the guys afterwards to do some B-roll so that you can see the quality of these, these cleats here, which are beautiful the way they've incorporated them into the hull. And the anchor locker as well. The yeah. fact you've got a flush anchor locker up there. You can just imagine laying here off the coast of Ibiza with your friends, chilling out on your mini super yacht. Yeah. With your phone in the phone yeah, holder. Yeah, with your phones your up Guinness. there. Guinness. That's it, yeah. We'll <laughs> pint of Guinness and my iPhone, that's all I need. And also nice wide uh, sidewalks. I mean, yeah, very wide. Yeah. And there's plenty to grab onto as well, which is obviously really important. Yeah. Nice radar mast as well up there. Yeah, in fact, I heard you earlier talking to one of the guys from the shipyard about the radar mast. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's two domes, but one of them's a dummy dome. Yeah. So you wouldn't ordinarily have two solid state radars on a boat that's 45 feet LOA. Yeah. But I think aesthetically, having two up there on a radar mast like that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and uh, having the height as well is good because you don't really want to have your radar at head height. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I see it on, on some boats where you've got a radar mast where the angle, you know that when that radar's turned on, whether it be a solid state or a traditional spinning radar, every time the beam comes to the forward sector, you're gonna be getting that dose of radiation, which you, which you really don't want because it's, it's a magnetron up there. So you wouldn't wanna sit inside a microwave. So yeah, I think little details like that, if you're gonna be on here with your family, that's the kind of thing I'd look at. How high is the radar mast? Because I, if I'm gonna be using the boat with the radar on, yeah. I wanna make sure that when we go to bed at night, we're not gonna be glowing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a really nice touch, I think. I, I, I love the whole thing. I mean, you've, you, you, unfortunately on YouTube, you can't feel stuff, but this feels like quality. It does. I love this that folds over. You've got your champagne in the middle or your yep. Bex. Or <laughs> Bex or Guinness, <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever your tip you is. Fill that with ice. I think the thing is as well, because it's aluminium, you can do a lot of customization with, with the layout. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to lay out like this, then fantastic. But if you yeah. wanted to, you know, remove this, this mini galley, you could yeah. do that as well. But, I mean, personally, why would you want to? You could be at the helm of the boat, you know, yeah. with your friends sat here, you know, another friend sorting out the food. It's just a really, really good setup. Yeah, it um, makes sense to have it here, doesn't it? That's the right place for it. I yeah. Think. And I love as well these grills that are proper grills. They're not just um, a hot plate. You know, you can get those stripes on your yes. space. Yes, yeah, you know? yeah professional looking steaks that's what yeah. it's all about i think the thing that we were talking about earlier on the thing that amazes me about this boat is the seaworthiness of it now we were talking that this is an rcd category b boat which means that you can be out on this in belfort eight conditions wow. in four meter seas now you probably wouldn't want to intentionally do that yeah. but if you are out somewhere at anchor and you need to get back to your marina and the weather takes a turn for the worse um, you know, Belfort 8 conditions, that's, that's pretty gnarly stuff. Yeah. And again, you know, 45 foot boat, aluminium, RCD category B. At least you know if you do get caught out in bad weather, you can What's make it back. What's the worst that you've been caught out in? Hurricane. Really? Yeah, so um, when I was in the Royal Navy, we were doing a, a, an exercise off of Scotland, a, a NATO exercise. So there's maybe 15 ships um, in, in our flotilla. And yeah, a hurricane hit. So. I've never been in conditions like it. The, the, the boat, the ship was actually bending. The ship was bending. So on the aft section of the warship, the distance between the deck and the overhead is probably about 14 feet. And you have all the piping and the, or, yeah. all the trunking up there. But the ship was bending so much that you could grab hold of the overhead piping and it would lift you up off of the floor. Uh, the, the, when I first joined my first ship, the bunks had seat belts in and I never understood why. And that week that we were in those hurricane force conditions, I understood why they had seatbelts. Wow. Wow. So yeah, I've, I have a lot of respect for boats that are built and designed for rough weather yeah. uh, passage making. And obviously- I, th I think when, when I read the comments uh, on YouTube, people say, yes, but can you take it out in a storm? I sometimes think, do you really want to go out in a storm? Absolutely. I think it's probably a pretty horrible experience. It is. And I, I think the thing is though, you can, you can have the best um, you know, weather forecasting models that yeah. are telling you that you're gonna have flat calm conditions. But it can change like that. Yeah. Um, and you know, you get a squall coming in, and at least you know on a boat like this that you're gonna be able to handle it. But yeah. I mean, I love rough, rough weather cruising. Oh, do you really? Yeah, yeah. That, that's the stuff I love. Yeah. I, it put me out on a lifeboat because I 
yeah. volunteered in the RNLI for a couple of years. Oh, really? The rougher the weather, the better. Yeah. I really love the rough stuff. That's why I like Guinness. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm still, I'm, my idea of yachting is still in the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah. on a, with palm trees in the background. I'll do that as well. I like that as well. So um, as, as an operator, which I, I am still learning to be, how does this strike you as the helm station? I mean, the first thing that sticks out to me is that steering wheel. Uh, I mean, the thickness of it uh, and the engineering of it. Yeah. Um, you know, doing over 30 knots, holding on to that uh, whilst powering through the waves. I can imagine it's really responsive and I'm yeah. really looking forward to going out with you on this and seeing what it's uh, all about. But yeah, and obviously you've got two large multifunction displays as well. So you can have your radar display, engine management monitoring over there on the left hand side, or you can switch it and mix it up how you want. Personally, I'd have digital charts and radar. That's how yeah. I'd have it. But yeah, I mean, you know, and you've got lots of seating. I mean, you could, you could yeah. comfortably sit three people. And in fact, I was looking at it thinking, well, I, we don't know yet because we haven't been out, but if the bow lifts much, you may lose your visibility. And then they show me that this actually lifts like that. So you've got uh, a better yeah. position. Yeah. Uh, so they've, they've thought of everything. With yeah, they really have. Yeah. Well, and that, that kind of position is, is fantastic for I fast. think this is the right position. Yeah, isn't it? it is. Like, like that. Because you, you can really, because obviously you've got the foot plate here as well. So yeah. you can anchor your feet on this foot plate, you know, push into the seat, hold on to the helm with two, with two yeah. hands, and that's it. You can just keep going yeah. and going and going. And these Volvo IPSs have made it all so easy. You can just, you literally turn it, turn it, and the boat turns as you I, want it to. I think that's, that's one of the things with a boat like this that I think will appeal to a lot of people is that you don't have to have hours and hours and hours of boat handling experience. Yeah to actually handle this boat safely and efficiently. Uh, because, you know, like you say, the IPS drives, you know, you've got your joystick here where you can pretty much get it in and out of a marina like this yeah. with not a lot of experience, which, you know, I just think opens up the market as well because not everybody has got the confidence or the experience uh, to handle a boat like this, but at least you know that with this kind of setup, you can quite comfortably yeah. navigate this boat. And the touchscreen as well is also simple now. It's also intuitive and, and, and easy to operate. When I said to the guys in the shipyard, how do we open up the engine hatch? They just went, mm -hmm. press the button, it's up. And actually, funnily enough, um, when I asked them, it was already up and somebody was in there. Yeah. But there was a sensor to tell them somebody was in there so it wouldn't close. A very, very important safety feature. Yeah. But where this blew me away, after you. Thank you very down, much. Down here. This surprised me to have um, to have a small bed here, but of course you could also put a small dining area. Absolutely. Another galley. I think that's the thing. If yeah. you're going to uh, you know buy a boat like this and you want it just to be you and your partner, you don't want a second bunk in here. You could have a, an eating area, have a table here, little dining area. I think yeah. it would be fantastic. You've got a natural light coming through over there, yeah. and the, the really great use of the indirect lighting. Yeah. Obviously, we've got. What looks like a mirror, but isn't. It's actually a telly, and the headroom as well. Two meter yeah, headroom. You're quite tall. How tall are you? I'm I'm, I'm 190 centimeters. Right, so time. six foot something. Yeah, six yeah. foot three and a bit. <laughs> six feet. Really? important. Yeah. Cool. And I don't know if you've seen it yet. Have they shown you the the head? I had a little glimpse, but I, I yeah, want to see it again. Yeah, have a look. Have a look in there, and we'll definitely need B-roll to to show this. But if you look around the corner. Yeah, I mean, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, that's crazy. I, I've, I've been on boats that are <clears throat> double the length of this with, you know, bathrooms a lot smaller than yeah. this. Um, it is, and the, the, again, the finish, the fact you've got natural light in here, great use of the uh, indirect lighting once again. If you and your partner are getting ready to go out on a night out, uh, you both need to use this at the same time. One's in the shower, you know, other person brushing their teeth. You're not going to be on top of each other. No. There's just right. so much space down here um, for a boat that is 45 feet. Uh, I, I was saying to the guys earlier on, it's just it's just a marvel of engineering how they've yeah. managed to get so much volume yeah. in, in this boat. It's really well thought out. It is. Yeah. And then the what do they say? The piece de la resistance. <laughs> if you want to come back, uh, so I don't have to close you in the door. Yeah, yeah. Don't lock me in there. My wife wonder where I am. Is this? 
Yeah, I mean, look at this. And that air conditioning as well. They're telling me that the people that do the cabinetry in here are the same people that do some of the other Dutch soupy yachts. You can tell. They're like can't real high-end, yeah. high-end. You know, and, and I think if you're going to pay a lot for a 45-foot yacht, at least you want to be able to look at it and go, yeah, but this is quality. Yeah, you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to forget that you are on a 45-foot boat. You're going to, it's going to feel like you're on, on a boat that's at least double the size. And again, the, you know, the headroom, you've got lots of headroom up here. You've got another skylight that you can open up if you want to. Uh, the guys showed me earlier on that the, the, you know, the blinds are electronic. And I think one of the things that's really important is that not only are they electronic, but you can't hear them. Yeah. You can't hear the motors. There's yeah. no rubbing when the blinds come down. Yeah. Um, it's completely silent operation. Yeah, I don't see the remote now. But, um, but the other thing, of course, is when you take off your gold diamond encrusted Rolex at night, which you just took off for the, for the purpose of the video. <laughs> Put my Apple Watch back on. And you're worried that somebody might sneak in in the night and steal it. Look at this. Secret compartment. Yeah, look at that. But uh, you've got a secret on both sides. You've got a little secret compartment that uh, will then close away and and again silent. You know yeah. you, you can't hear that motor and just the just the, the motion of that unit is just very very sleek. It's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, they said to me I mean, a lot of people who build smaller boats say we want it to be a pocket super yacht because yeah. it sounds good. But these they've really done a pocket super yacht. Yeah, this is amazing quality. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing with your experience and how many boats that you've been on. Uh, you know, you're the authority when it comes yeah. to things like that. So, oh, thank you. Oh, well, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just. It's it's just such a luxurious finish. Uh, I'd be, I think the thing for me is I'd be proud to show this boat off. Yes. yes. Uh, if, if my wife and I were you know, darting around Ibiza for the weekend, I'd want all my friends and family to come out because I'd want to show them this boat yeah. uh, because it's just such a lovely, lovely, comfortable, high quality vessel. Yeah. Cool, let's start closing words on the, back on the outside where there's more space. Absolutely. Our friends from Becca Yachts will be at the Monaco show. I don't know if we'll publish this before the Monaco show, but you'll be at Dusseldorf, which is in January. Yes, yes correct, yeah. So um, if people want to see the boat at Dusseldorf, uh, if they want to know more about Becca Yachts, what should they do? Uh, they come to Dusseldorf or they come to our shipyard in yeah. Houston. Yeah. And I'll put a link as well to your website on the description yeah. so that people can contact you and find out more details. And honestly, I mean, I know that just about every video I do, I rave about the boat because it's a yacht marketing platform. But this one really, as you know, was you showing me around, absolutely blew me away. What would you reckon? John, last words for you. Last words for me. I, like I said to you before, I'd be incredibly proud uh, to be an owner of, of this boat. I'd want to show it off. I'd be taking it out in the lumpy conditions that most people steer clear of uh, with my pint of Guinness um, and my iPhone safely stowed away. <laughs> it's just a really impressive boat. I, I think yeah. you, you have to see it to believe it. The fact that it's 45 feet, the fact you've got so much volume in here, you know, the finish, the design, yeah, it's really impressive. Yeah, yeah, me too. Thank you very much for that. Thanks, I appreciate it. We'll do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Enjoyed that. That was a good time, wasn't it? Oh, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Video. Yeah. Just a one right? Take it. Or one take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point, actually. One take, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely.